You're listening to I Communicate with your host, Mark Altman, on Full Service Radio, AM 830 WCRN. Once again, here's Mark. Hey, welcome back to I Communicate, and I'm here with Quinn Donovan and Mike and Matt Doherty. I'm Mark Altman, and guys, we're going to talk about get into challenges a little bit. I want to talk about, um, I'd like you all to answer the biggest challenge you face as a high school athlete, and I'm not necessarily talking about in sports. I mean, just think of, maybe think of from the perspective of it could be balancing work and extracurricular and school and so on. So what do, what do you each, uh, Mike, let's start with you. What do you think your biggest challenge is as a high school athlete? Um, I think you said it, balancing all the things that you do in your life. Like basketball is like very, very important to me, but I also have to remember school is also very important. And I have a ton of friends that I like hanging out with. So sometimes you got to just pick and choose what you're going to do like on that weekend. Like it could be a Saturday night. You could be like, I got like three tests next week or I could go out and hang out with my friends. So it's definitely uh, sometimes you're going to have to pick and choose. And sometimes you have to pick the boring one over the more fun one. But that's the best decision and most responsible thing to do. So the balance is probably the toughest part about being a high school athlete. Okay, Quinn? Yeah, I completely agree with that. I mean, definitely like balancing academics and athletics is very difficult. And uh, as a high school athlete, I know obviously you hear all the things about junior year and um, last season during basketball, it was kind of like the whole winter of junior year is like pretty much the toughest portion of your whole high school career. So I remember last year we would have games like we played up at, like, Fitchburg on a Tuesday night, so we get home at, like, 11, and, like, I'm just sitting, I'm starting my homework, so I'm up from, like, 11 to 2, like, doing homework, then got to go wake up and go back to school, go to practice the next day, and so it, it's really, it can be very difficult, and you have to kind of just, like, keep, just keep going and um, making sure that you keep, um, just keeping your head on straight and try to do each thing to the best of your ability. Mine would definitely be to... Um like represent yourself both on and off the court in both in positive ways like on the court you want to be respected and off the court you definitely want to be respected and you got to hold yourself to a higher standard because everybody's looking at you and there's a lot of people looking at you to be successful but there's also people looking at you to knock you down and almost take you out of your element so it's definitely maintaining like I guess an appropriate like stature on and off the court. But Matt, man, that's that's true. But those are just words. So are you telling me you're actually conscious of a, acting a certain way because of that expectation? Well, it's just it's just how you represent yourself. Like you got to know that like there's eyes watching you almost at all times. So you got to make the smart decision every time you make a decision. So give me a couple of examples how you how you've done that. Well, so it's like if you got an early Saturday morning practice, all your friends are going out. You just got to be like, you know what? No, I'm gonna stay in. Like, rest up. Like, go to bed early, wake up tomorrow, have a great practice. Or it's just, like, if you're out and about around town, like, you're like maybe you're with the group of people that, like, aren't making the best decisions, it's taking yourself out of those situations just to, like, hold yourself up to a higher standard. Awesome. And so do they give you heat on a Friday night if you're not going out because you got an early Saturday morning practice? No, our, our friends are awesome. They, they 100%, like, respect our grind and just they know how much we love the sport and we wouldn't want to jeopardize anything. So let's pretend that there are three kids going through the Westboro program right now that are your clones individually. <laughs> they're freshmen, but they're your clones. And they walk up to you and they say, what's the best advice you could give me to persevere through high school? And remember, they're you, but now you've experienced being you three years later, so you're telling them. So Mike, what would you tell them? Um, for basketball, at least, I tell myself to play with more confidence. Uh, I remember being just a 14-year-old on varsity. I was nervous. I was scared. And, like, I, didn't, I never started a game in the beginning of the season, but like, I remember the first game I was like the, the seventh guy um, or like the second sub coming off the bench, and like that kind of put me in a rattled situation. I also had to play a position that I wasn't really comfortable in in point guard. But I would just tell myself to have more confidence, practice, um, practice the skills you're not that good at, and practice like the ball handling and being a point guard. But confidence is definitely a, a major thing that I would tell myself. Now, Mike, you probably know the next question I'm going to ask you is when you're talking to your old you, and then that person's going to say to you, how would I do that? How should I play with more confidence? you got to give them the roadmap and the plan. So what's that plan? Um, I, it would probably be... Uh, well, ball handling was one of the most 
the thing I never wanted to turn the ball over because like I didn't want to be that 14 year old who couldn't handle pressure or wouldn't be able to set up the offense or whatever. So and in practice, I would always try and avoid doing that. Uh, I remember like doing zigzags. I'd be like, "Yo, Matt, like let's let's like can you guard me? But like don't guard me that like well to like get get me more comfortable. But like I'd probably tell myself to push myself harder and like get in those uncomfortable si- situations now." So that next year and the other years uh, later on that you'll be more comfortable and you'll just be better off. Do you think you would tell this person to maybe not put as many unreasonable expectations on yourself and not have so much fear? Uh, Yeah, I think I'd definitely tell myself that, like, look, you're just you're 14. You're still a freshman. You have three more years of this. Just do it the best you can. And if you don't uh, live up to your own expectations or everyone else's expectations, you're fine. You still have a lot more time to improve. I have this expression when people, when we think about youth sports today, there's this, uh, I call it this wussification of society that we can't treat kids the same in sports. And I, I look at it and I think it is possible to have fun and compete to your hardest. You don't have to do one or the other. Mm-hmm. So I think what's key there, Mike, when I'm hearing you talk about that is you can take the pressure off yourself. You can ease the expectations on yourself but still be passionate and fired up and intense. You don't have to sacrifice your effort by easing the expectations on yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Quinn, what about you? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I would definitely say, I know it's like really cliche, but it's basically just, it all comes down to hard work. And I mean, there's always going to be pressure and expectations and everything. And for, for me personally, like I grew up my whole family's athletes and my parents both played college sports and stuff. And then I was like coming into high school, I had two older brothers. They were both like, did very well in school and in sports. So I kind of had, kind of felt like I had a lot to live up to. And at times I was like, well, I, I don't want to be like the dumbest one and like the, the least athletic one. And so I was always, um, just always like constantly working hard and it ended up turning out like very well for me. And I don't know, I, I wouldn't say, I, I would say I'm definitely not the dumbest and least athletic <laughs> one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's a standard to shoot for, not the dumbest. <laughs> Just teasing again. Okay, go, go ahead, Matt. Um, I liked what you said. Definitely, easy. I had like way too high of expectations as a freshman. Like, and for a long time, I wasn't happy with how I was playing. But I'd also tell myself to start making connections earlier with teachers that I trust, because it took me all the way up until a senior in high school in order mm. to like talk to teachers about like just personal stuff. And I know Mrs. Stoker, shout out to Mrs. Stoker out there. Um, she always helps me, whether it's a school, basketball. She's just such a helpful resource, and I just wish I found more people like her early on in high school because they could have helped me with school or outside of school stuff or basketball even. You know, Matt, what is it that Miss Stoker, uh, we're talking about Kathy Stoker, who's an English teacher at Westboro High. What is it that she understands about being an effective teacher and support systems for students that so many other teachers don't get? What is it? She definitely understands, like, the psychology of a teenager and, like, how our brains work and operate in school and stuff like that. And she's just so easy to talk to. Like, any problem you have, you go up to her, she'll, like, approach you in such a calm way, and then together you'll find the solution. She'll never, like, give you a solution. She'll always talk you through and, like, almost make you figure out your own solution to your problem, which I think is the best resource to have. So she's developing your critical thinking skills. Yes. Which is critical. So, uh, okay, well, very interesting. And so along those lines, I guess the question is, when you look back at, at your high school experience, what is your identity now, guys? You know, you're, you're heading off to college at the end of the year, and identity is a really big word, but is your identity around basketball and the recognition you've received as an athlete? Is it around your schoolwork and the recognition you receive for schoolwork? Where does the identity come from? What are those things that uh, represent your identity? Quinn? Um, well, I would say I think it all comes down to just being, like, a hard worker and being um, personable, like, Basically, the whole, you kind of incorporate everything together, and I think everything goes hand in hand. Like, I always worked extremely hard in school, and then anybody that comes to a basketball game, I think they could tell, like, I try to be the hardest worker on the floor, and I'm going to do anything I can to help uh, my team win. And so it's basically, it's definitely not just, like, basketball, because I would never want to be defined as, like, a basketball player, or I play baseball, too, so, like, as a baseball player. Um, But it's all, it's the student-athlete part, and it's, like, the just like the person part and like I I love talking to people and stuff and uh, so I think it's all kind of incorporated together as a student athlete and a person and 
um, just who you are as a teenager. So, Quinn, if, if a year from now someone came back to Westboro High and said, hey, remember that guy Quinn Donovan? What's the first thing you think of when you think of Quinn Donovan? And they said, they said, just so everybody knows, Mike just made a snarky remark. <laughs> um, so, uh, Quinn, if they said, you know what, it was his work ethic. You know, that's whether it was sports, school, friendship, mm -hmm. it was his work ethic. That's what you want to hear. Yeah, I would love that. And just heart, too. I think I, I, everything I do, I do with a lot of heart. So that would be great. Okay. Mike? Um, I agree with Quinn. Hard work is definitely um, one of the most important things you can have. But I also think uh, just being like a good person uh, on and off the court, like when people watch you, they don't want to like look at you and be like, oh, that kid's disrespectful. That kid's a brat. That kid just complains all the time. Just like you want to be a respectful uh, young adult because like that's what we're that's what we are. We're young adults right now. And uh, when when you go off to college, you're not going to be. I'm not going to be known as Mike Doe, the basketball player. Or Mike Doe, me and Matt, the twins, as basketball players. So like being a good person, like building good connections with people, is uh, very important as well. Yeah, I mean that's basically what I was going to say too. But uh, yeah, like Mike said, I for the longest time when I was younger, I just I wanted to be known as like the basketball player. Like I wanted to be known as like the baller and like one of the two brothers that like could play basketball, but as I grew up and, like, matured a little bit, I realized that, that although it is important, like, I like to be known as, like, a good basketball player. It's definitely by far way more important to me to, like, have the connections with people that I have now and just to be known as a respectful young adult, like Mike said. So we're going to go to break, and when we come back, we're going to transition to college and some of the uh, transitions these guys are going to have to make going to college. Uh, Quinn Donovan, Mike, and Matt Darty. I'm your host, Mark Altman. This has been I Communicate. We'll be back for our final segment after the break. Mm -hmm.